Hey everybody! So usually we talk about a project of some sort uh, here on the bench. But today let's talk about this abomination behind me on the bench. Well, that might be a little bit of a strong word, and if it's not, I probably shouldn't sound so excited about it. All right, this is a uh, 10 gigahertz beacon, which I call Quick Beacon or QB for short. Uh, my friend Tom helped me uh, help me come up with that. Uh, name. So let's talk about this. As you probably recall, if you've been watching the channel for a while, this is not the 10 gigahertz beacon project we've been talking about. I set out to build a clean beacon, by which I mean one that has a reasonably low level of phase noise around the carrier, one that doesn't have objectionable key clicks and has fairly clean, uh, nice CW keying, and one that doesn't have any strong in-band or out-of-band spurs. Uh, and I was pretty far along in that and had something I was pretty happy with, but I've run into another technical problem with it, which is going to delay it by some number of months or who knows how long. Uh, and we do need to talk about that, and probably we should talk about that before we talk about this, which was built to temporarily replace it. But I want to talk about this first because this is on the bench and it's in the way of getting the other one back here so we can really talk about it. So I need this thing off the bench and, and while it's up and running on the bench, I want to let you listen to it and see it in action. Uh, so let's just talk about this one first. So I built this as a quick beacon to get something up and running um, because I don't know how long the other one is going to be delayed. This one is now running about uh, one and a half watts output uh, here on the bench. It's been running now consistently for, or uh, you know, full time for over five weeks, and uh, it's holding very steady. Nothing has uh, changed with it. Now, I'm not very happy with it performance-wise as far as the phase noise, key clicks, and so on. But it is a beacon. It does work, and there's no other 10 gig operators around here other than me. So who's it going to bother? Uh, nobody really. So. Um, it'll do temporarily. All right, I'm going to get out from in front of the camera. You've looked at me long enough, and I will show you the uh, the beacon a little bit, and we'll go over to the shack and listen to it on a receiver, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, technical details of this beacon. Okay, so here we are taking a look at uh, Quick Beacon, or QB. Uh, the RF generating circuitry is in this box here. Uh, we'll pull this cover off in a little while and uh, and look in there. Uh, there's a synthesizer, an OCXO, and a, a small um, 200 milliwatt power amplifier. Coming out of there, we go into this 202 watt uh, amplifier, and then an isolator, and then uh, this would go uh, to the antenna. Right now, it's going into a uh, 30 dB attenuator, and into my uh, power meter. So while we're on the subject of power, let's just say we can get this door out of the way and we'll uh, turn on the uh, power meter back here and uh, let that uh, we'll let that stabilize for uh, for just a minute. Uh, while it's doing that, uh, we'll come around here and talk about another feature of this beacon. There are two heat sinks on the back, uh, one to cool the RF generating circuitry, the low level stuff, one to cool the amplifier. Uh, to bring heat, you know, outside the case because it was going to get way too hot in the summer. In fact, uh, this RF generating circuit, when I tested it, uh, this box, uh, when I tested it on the bench without a heat sink, it got so hot. I mean, it was just crazy hot, and the o it even got above 60 degrees uh, C, and the OCXO took off because it couldn't regulate uh, temperature anymore. So I decided we clearly need heat sinks. I couldn't believe it for 11 watts power dissipation, which is about what that that has, uh, that this box alone wasn't enough to cool it. Uh, but it wasn't. It was a warm summer day, to be fair, but still, it's this is going to be up on a tower where it's subject to uh, many warm and hot summer days, so that wasn't going to do it. So I am trying a little bit of an experiment. Since this has an OCXO and not a GPSDO uh, reference, it is going to drift a little bit in, in frequency with temperature changes. So I wanted to keep it from getting extremely hot or extremely cold. Uh, partly for that reason. So if I mounted everything directly on the heat sinks, I was going to lose all the heat in the winter and it would be brutally cold in here. And I tried an experiment and I don't know that this accomplishes anything at all, okay? But it's an experiment. 
Uh, so, you know, the nature of an experiment, I guess, is that you don't really know what the outcome is, so you try something and find out. So this box is mounted to the heat sink with five, I think it's five, um, uh, screws and there's spacers in between the box and the heat sink. Now, most of them are these red ones, which are GPO3 material. It's sort of a uh, fiberglass type material and doesn't, doesn't transfer any heat. One of them is this, is an aluminum, um, uh, spacer like this one here which coated with thermal compound on both sides does transfer heat to the heat sink so the idea is to get enough heat out to the heat sink in the summer to keep it from overheating but to retain some of the heat and not dissipate everything to the outside world in the winter and try to keep this from getting quite as cold now i don't know if that actually works uh, it's some crazy idea that I came up with in my head and I decided to try it as an experiment. Now the amplifier plate is on there with uh, four spacers in behind these four corner screws. And those are all aluminum. I initially started with two uh, GPO3 and two aluminum and it was getting too warm still on, uh, on hot days. So, or warm days. Or if I turn the heat up in here. So we went to four of them and uh, we'll see how that goes there. I'm less worried about temperature extremes on that, honestly, than I am on the RF generating circuitry because of the uh, OCXO. So, all right, the um, power meter has had a chance to stabilize here now. And that meter is set to five uh, uh, plus five dBm uh, full scale. And when we get to the steady carrier key down part of the beacon here, We'll see that that's about uh, minus 3.4. So 3.4 dB below 5 dBm, which is 1.6 dBm. Now remember, there's the 30 dB attenuator, so we have to add that back in. So 1.6, uh, whoops, I just knocked over my little uh, piece of metal that holds the door open here. So 1.6 plus 30 dB, the actual power level coming out of this beacon um to the attenuator is uh 31.6 dbm which uh, let me just reach be back here and turn off the power meter which is uh, about 1.44 watts so just under 1.5 watts the actual output of this 2 watt amplifier is probably close to 2 watts because there's 0.4 db loss in the isolator and this cable here, I don't know, I have not measured the loss, and I don't know the specs on it. But chances are that cable is, um, you know, three quarters of a dB, maybe one dB loss. If that was one dB loss, let's say, plus the 0.4 in the isolator, then that would be, you know, 1.4 dB added to the 31.6, so that would be 33 dB, a dBm. And that would be exactly 2 watts. So I suspect that the amplifier is actually putting out very close to uh, 2 watts. So that's a quick introduction to the electronics of a QB. We will go into it more in detail later. I have these, these brackets on it for mounting to the tower. The one thing I have left to do is figure out how I'm going to mount this slot antenna here uh, to the box, you know, sticking up... Uh, sticking up uh, out of the box, you know, like so, and how I'm going to put a radome uh, over that to enclose it from the weather. And I just have not come up with an idea that I'm happy with yet, that I can mechanically build or machine with my limited uh, you know, machine working abilities here and tools to work with. So I'm still thinking about that, trying to come up with something that uh, I can live with for mounting the antenna and the radome. That's all that's left to do on this. And it will be, we will we'll be ready to go up to the beacon site and be installed as soon as I get that done. Of course, it's winter now and snow on the ground, so probably at this point, realistically, we're looking at spring before it gets installed. All right, let's um, go over to the shack and uh, listen to this on a receiver, and we'll talk about um, talk about some other aspects of this, especially the uh, the uh, CW keying on it. Okay, so we're over in the shack here listening to this uh, beacon. Um, and you might note here, uh, if you look at this bottom uh, bottom waterfall, it's about 12 hertz high in frequency. It does wander a little bit because it's an OCXO. Uh, and it's fairly weak because it's running into a, a dummy load on the bench, and I can't point the dish on the tower directly at it. Uh, I can point it okay in azimuth, but I can't tilt the elevation of the dish down to look at the house. So it's not 
really in the pattern of the dish, so it's a little weak. Maybe later we can listen to it with the beacon on a small antenna radiating some power and hear it a little better. But if you're a good CW operator and you listen to this carefully, if it's not too weak for you, you may notice that the keying sounds a little choppy. It's not like a perfect one to three to one uh, uh, dot dash space uh, ratio. And this is at, I think, 10 words per minute. It's a little bit choppy. Wait for the uh, CW keying here again. Well, it would help if it was a little stronger. We'll see if we can get it on an antenna later, so it is. But uh, let me show you this um, on, on something that will uh, make it a little more obvious. Let me get my other, um, let me get my antenna moved here to uh, 347 degrees or so. And we'll tune down to my other uh, little beacon running the same uh, same RF generator board, the same little synthesizer board up on the hill uh, six miles away, which is running at about 15 words per minute. And here the uh, choppiness is even more evident at this higher speed. Or, of course, now we're into the uh, carrier. And this one's running about 50 hertz, uh, no, about uh, 30 hertz high in frequency. It's wandered a little bit since the last time I reset it. So again, if you're a CW operator, you probably notice that sounds a little bit choppy. It's not uh, not the greatest CW you've ever heard in your life. And the faster you you go, the faster the CW speed, the more pronounced that becomes. So uh, you're not totally thrilled with that. The little uh, synthesizer board does the keying automatically on board, which is very convenient, but it's not the greatest keying. Also, if the signal were stronger, you could really hear the key clicks. You can kind of see evidence of them on the waterfall. During the keying part, you see these, uh, this green extending out the sides. It's pretty weak here, you know, that's running about five milliwatts on an indoor antenna and blocked by the building and a lot of trees up on the hill, so it's pretty weak. But if the signal were strong, the key clicks are kind of bad on it. And also, uh, the signal is too weak here to see, but the phase noise is only about 45 dB down at 10 kilohertz or so off the carrier, and even at 100 kilohertz off, it's not great, so. Not thrilled with these synth these uh, synthesizers as a beacon. They do work. Um, they were very affordable when I bought them. Just not what I set out to uh, to build. Unfortunately, there don't seem to be any uh, strong in-band spurs that I'm aware of, or out-of-band spurs, hopefully, so it does work. All right, so now that we've had a chance to listen to it, because um, it, it's going to drift a little bit when I take the cover off that RF generation box, so I wanted to listen to it before I do that. We'll go back over and look inside it and talk a little bit more about uh, what's in this beacon and uh, how it works. Okay, here we are looking inside the RF uh, generation box of uh, QB, or Quick Beacon. And we'll talk a little bit about what's in here. First of all, for a frequency reference, we have this uh, fairly good uh, 10 megahertz OCXO. Again, I would rather have it GPS locked, but this is QB. This was never going to be perfect, so we went with an OCXO to keep the cost down. Uh, that's running uh, as the reference into this VHF design um, synthesizer board, which can generate the uh, 10 gig frequency uh, directly and also does the uh, CW keying. You program in the message and it uh, takes care of the keying for you. These were pretty cheap. These were available from VHF Design, a Ukrainian company. No longer available, I think, uh, as much because parts aren't available as because of any uh, any other consideration. Uh, but uh, sadly, no longer available. But they were cheap, and a lot of people are using them for beacons because of that. They were like 96 US dollars a piece. So that generates a little less than 10 milliwatts uh, out of there, and so uh, goes into a little driver amplifier behind here which is a surplus unit I got off eBay for like 40 bucks. Takes uh, about minus, uh, minus 7 or minus 8 dBm in and gives you uh, 200 to 300 milliwatts out, depending on the specific one. They vary a little bit from unit to unit. 
So I had way too much power to drive it, so I put this 15 dB attenuator in here to knock the drive out of the synthesizer down to about the right level for this. And on this one, I'm getting about 220, 230 milliwatts out of the little driver amplifier, which is enough to fully drive this uh, two watt amplifier, which is something I got as part of a package deal of 10 gig equipment uh, uh, quite some time back. The output of the amplifier goes into this uh, isolator to protect the uh, amplifier in case something happens with the antenna SWR, something goes wrong with the antenna, or maybe it gets encased in ice or something on the radome and SWR goes up. So this will prevent reflected power from getting back into the, uh, to the amplifier. And then we come out, um, come out of that, this yellow cable would, would go to the antenna. So hopefully eventually uh, this uh, slot antenna would get mounted uh, through the top of the box, but sticking down in so that it's, uh, you know, it would be back in the box a little, a little further, sticking up through the top. So its SMA connector there covered with a little red cap would be fairly close to the RF output of the uh, isolator, and I'd only need like a 6-inch cable or, or maybe less to... Uh, to connect to the antenna and keep losses down there. So that's the one part I still need to do is uh, is mount the antenna on this and then uh, Quick Beacon will be ready to uh, go up to the hill and uh, be mounted on the tower. So, all right, there you have it. There's Quick Beacon. I'm going to shut it off now and get it off the bench and uh, sometime soon we'll get the other beacon back in here and I'll show you the problem I ran into it to with it and we'll talk about why uh, why I've built this one temporarily until I can get the uh, the better beacon that I'm working on uh, built. So I will go and, uh, and find an antenna here and put on this and see if we can get the signal up a little stronger. We can go back and listen to it over on the uh, receiver again with a little more uh, signal strength uh, to end this video. Okay, so we're back one more time listening to uh, QB on the receiver here. Hopefully I don't have the volume uh, too loud on it. So now we've got a little more signal strength. I just put a little antenna on it um, so we get a little more uh, signal over here in the uh, in the shack. So uh, when it goes back to keying again, maybe you can hear uh, what I said about the the keying being a little bit choppy, even at 10 words per minute. Not bad. So it's pretty acceptable at 10 words per minute. Once you go faster, it gets uh, to where I really don't like the sound of it at all. So uh, you can really see the key clicks. You see the green uh, green splatter extending either side there. Um, you know, and again, it's not that strong. If it was a really strong signal, you'd really be hearing those clicks as you tune up and down the band. Uh, so it, you know, not perfect there either. And if you have discerning eyes and ears, you may notice uh, that there's, uh, you know, the carrier here looks like it's zigzagging back and forth a little bit in there. Uh, yeah, that's not the beacon. Um, something has happened with my uh, LNB-based and SDR-based receiver here in the shack. It's got this cyclic um, frequency uh, movement of about, uh, well now it's up to like uh, 8 to 10 hertz it's moving. It was just 1 or 2 hertz when I first started doing it and now it's more. So something is going funny with my receiving system. That is the receiver, not the uh, not the beacon doing that. So, you know, I don't know, yet another project to look into one of these days. But anyway, there's your introduction to a Quick Beacon, which will be going on the air up on uh, the hill at the beacon site slash repeater site. Uh, as soon as I can get the antenna mounted and, uh, and a ray dome and uh, get it up there. And soon we'll do another video. We'll talk about the uh, better beacon I was building and what's happening uh, with that. Thanks for watching. Hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed it and see you back next time.